And let me tell you, this is the problem with Barisan National. No one dares to stand up to the Prime Minister. And Najib now is like a king. A king that is creating the biggest scandal ever in the history of Malaysia. Huge! No one dare to say a thing. Nothing, not even a pin drop from any MCA or Gerakan leader. Or even AMNO leaders. Dr. M not included. <laughs> one MDB. One Malaysia Development Berhad. I know it's late. No, talk numbers at this hour. Uh, most of the time people fall asleep. But I try lah. Huh? Because I think this scandal deserves the attention of the people. This scandal is humongous. This scandal will be the mother of mother of mother of all scandals in the history of Malaysia. Four years. This company is only four years old. When it has accumulated debt of 36 billion ringgit. In fact, more than that. 36 billion ringgit in four years. How do you do that? Did the government inject any capital into the company? No. It is entirely funded by debt. They invested in some company in Middle East, Petro Saudi. Name sound very good, but in the end, the deal collapsed. Petro Saudi promised to pay the loan interest of 8.75% a year. Wow, very good interest rate. Huh? Guaranteed. When I asked 1MDB during the PAC meeting in the last parliamentary session, they said, no worries. We are very confident with Petro Saudi. They are a very good company. They can pay 8.75% per annum. Then subsequently, what did they do? They took this money and decided, oh, maybe Petro Saudi not so good after all. They killed the deal. They take the money, instead of bringing it back to Malaysia and paying back to the bondholders, they took the money and parked it in Cayman Islands. Huh? Cayman Islands. How much is that? 7.2 billion ringgit. Parked in Cayman Islands. Parked in Cayman Islands to do what? To invest. Who is the investment manager? Cannot say. We ask in parliament, who is the investment manager of 7.2 billion ringgit in Cayman Islands? Which bank? Is it uh, Goldman Sachs? Is it uh, who else? UBS? Is it uh, Templar? Is it uh, Climate Benson? Is it any of these big name funds? No, cannot say. Anonymous fund, 7.2 billion ringgit. If you ask me, lah, because the government refused to be transparent, my speculation is the money is not there anymore. The money has gone. And they need to hide under some cover to say that they still have the money. That's why they go to Cayman Islands. Because you can't track any company there. You can't check the accounts of companies in Cayman Islands because it's where all the dodgy money goes to in this world. If you want to hide something, go to Cayman Islands. But 1MDB became desperate. What do you do? I still need to pay back the loan after 20, 30 years. I lost the money. What do I need to do? Oh, let me think of a new scheme to generate cash flow. What's the best way to generate cash flow? Let's buy up some company that can generate cash flow. Wow, very good business, huh? I also can. Huh? How to generate cash flow? Buy some company that can generate cash flow. Okay? So what companies can generate cash flow? Uh, today in Malaysia, companies that generate best cash flow, power companies, IPPs, every month collect money, a lot of money. So they decided to look around and see which IPP to buy. The first one they bought, they bought from Ananda Krishnan. 8.8 .8 billion ringgit. The second one they bought, they bought from Genting. 2.3 billion ringgit or so. Total, they spent about 11 billion ringgit. But let me ask you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you think Ananda Krishnan and Genting stupid one? Uh? You think they will sell a money cash cow to you just because you are one MDB? Uh? The only reason why Ananda Krishnan and Genting sold their lucrative IPPs to one MDB, why? Because one MDB was desperate. And they will pay stupid prices 
to buy from me. I tell you, uh, anything other than my wife, the rest, if you pay stupid money, I also sell to you. <laughs> Luckily, I put disclaimer there. Lah. And the auditors confirmed it. Not Tony Poisson. Auditors confirmed it. Within six months after the acquisition, the auditors wrote off 1.2 billion ringgit of the valuation. 1.2 billion. Now, that's only one of the problems. They overpaid. The other problem about overpaying is they borrowed money to pay for the acquisition. Entirely by loans. Now, because they have no money, not only they were desperate to buy the company, they were desperate to borrow. So because they were desperate to borrow, they have to pay higher interest. Very simple, ma. If I'm the bank, you're so desperate to borrow, you want so much money, pay higher interest, law. Not only pay higher interest, we just found out over the last week, and this was also exposed and explored in the age, Financial Daily as well as the weekly. They paid crazy fees for the loans to be arranged. They appointed Goldman Sachs international investment banker arrange everything i want to raise 4.75 billion us dollars approximately 15.2 billion ringgit that's a lot of money to raise and how much fees did they pay to raise this money tenaga national they raised 300 million us dollars small amount they paid 2% fees Syarikat Penerbangan Malaysia, the company that leases planes to Malaysian Airlines, they raised 1 billion US dollars. They paid fees of 0.5%. The Mexican and Uruguay government, these are not your first develop, developing, the developed country government. This is Mexico, Uruguay. Hopefully, Malaysia better than them. But never mind, Mexico, Uruguay government. They borrow money, 3 billion, 4 billion US dollars. How much fees did they pay? 0.2%, 0.1%. You know our 1MDB, uh, borrow 15 billion ringgit. Uh, how much fees did they pay? More than 10%. People pay 0.1%. We pay more than 10%. This is not 10 times more. Uh. This is 100 times more than what people pay. How much did the fees work out to? 1.54 billion ringgit. I don't want to boast. Lah, huh? I ran a small listed company before. I also raised money before. Even for my tiny company, when I raised funds, the cost was only 3%. One MDB paid more than 10% to Goldman Sachs to raise its money. So I asked, no, in the prospectus, which was strictly confidential, but luckily no OSA on these prospectus. So I won't go to jail. It's an international prospectus, ma. no OSA law. Okay? But it was strictly confidential. In the prospectus, Goldman Sachs clearly stated the 10% fees were to be deducted for certain commissions, fees and expenses. Fees and expenses, very normal. Commissions, hey, hey, hey. very funny. So when I raised this issue, okay, both Goldman Sachs and later on 1MDB responded. Goldman Sachs say what? No, 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 no. There was no third party. We didn't pay anybody any commissions. 1MDB didn't ask us to pay any commissions. All the fees goes to me as well as the lawyers and the bankers and the accountants. Okay? So the whole 10% of fees went to Goldman Sachs, the lawyers and the accountants. Nobody else. One MDB, idiots. People pay 0.1%, they pay 10%. Complete idiots and I asked Najib to sack the entire top management of One MDB. You agree or not? Agree or not? If they pay Goldman Sachs 10%, they must be completely out of their mind. Completely incompetent, complete idiots. But One MDB came out and answered on Friday. They said, no, 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 no. The fees mostly were for discounts to the bond purchases, which means the people who lend uh, 1MDB money, who bought up the bonds, they get a discount. 
So the bulk of it went to a discount, which is normal in fundraising exercises. Yes, it is normal. How does a discount work? So I want to borrow $1 from you. Instead of getting $1, I get 90 cents. So that's a discount. So I promise to pay you back in one year, one ringgit. But you only give me 90 cents now, in one year's time, I will give you one ringgit. That is how a discount for a bond works. Okay, like Tai Long, like that. Lah. Same, same concept. Okay, same like the loan sharks concept. Okay, so when I pay 5% interest, I pay 5% interest on my one ringgit, okay, even though I collect only 90 cents from you. So that's how a discount works for bonds. Yes, it is normal for discounts to happen. But I check the prospectus, the listing, doc, the, the, the set offer for sale document, the offer circular. And in the offer circular, it stated very clearly the issue price was 100%. No discount was mentioned. No discount at all. And in the offer document, it clearly states all the remaining balance to be paid to Goldman Sachs are for certain commissions, fees and expenses. So my question is very simple. The offer document says no discount. Goldman Sachs says they collect everything. One MDB said they offer discount. I wonder who they gave the discount to. Who is lying? Who's telling the truth? So I ask today in Parliament that they must respond. And we hope the minister who is responding for the Ministry of Finance during budget will answer these questions. Either Goldman Sachs, international investment banker, is wrong, or 1MDB is covering up one of the biggest scandals in the country today. 1.54 billion in commissions. Now, that's only part of the problem. I've gotten a lot of loans, 15 billion of loans, uh, in order to acquire 15 billion of power plants at an overpriced. So not only am I 100% leverage, I'm 100% leverage overpaying for the assets that I acquired. Tai Chi Liao. Problem really. Why? The returns, the cash flow generated from these companies will be so tiny, it is very little, barely enough to pay the interest. Because the assets were bought at a high price, the yield become very low. Just like your houses. You buy a house very high price, your rental yield become, the percentage become very low. Same thing. 1MDB bought these in, uh, independent power producers at a very high price. The yield, the return becomes very low. Coupled with the interest they have to pay, they make almost nothing. So what do you do? They still haven't solved the problem of how to cover up the hole in Cayman Islands. I have to find money to cover up the hole. What do I do? I need to build this business. What's the easiest way to get money from this business? Ah, list the company. That's the con man's job. You know? all, the, all, the, all the big businessmen I talk to, lah, you know? the big developers, the unlisted one. I ask them, hey, why don't you list your company? So big already, make so much money. I say only people desperate for money list the company. If you are not desperate for money, you keep all the profit for yourself. Oh. So they wanted to lease and raise 10 billion ringgit straight away from the market in order to pay off their old loans. But to lease the company, you must have good financial, you must have good forward earnings. You must show the investors, in future, I can earn how much. And based on the acquisitions they have had, not enough money. The government extended the contract for, this, uh, for these acquisitions, for these uh, concessions, the uh, Ananda Krishnan Tanjong concession, as well as the Genting concession. Not enough money, not making enough. So what the government did, they do tenders for power plant. One MDB participated in the tender. YTL also participated in the tender. YTL price lower than one MDB. The government said YTL didn't follow specs, YTL knock out, contract give to one MDB. Even though YTL in the papers clearly stated they have complied to everything, they have consulted the authorities before submitting their bid, they were still knocked out on the technicality, despite the fact that their tariffs are lower than that of 1MDB. And what's the implication for Malaysians? The implication for Malaysians is we will be paying higher than necessary electricity rates. Because once the tariff rates that uh, are awarded by the government to these IPPs are high, they will sell electricity at high prices to Tenaga. Tenaga have no choice but to sell higher electricity prices to Malaysians at large to recover costs. Now, at
At least earlier, there was a pretense of open tender. But unfortunately, despite winning the 2,000 megawatt tender in Kulim, in Kedah, worth 11 billion ringgit, still not enough. The valuation still not attractive enough. So the government decided, forget open tender. Take too much time. Let's give directly. So they gave a 50 watt, 50 megawatt uh, solar power plant also up north in uh, uh, Kedah. Still not enough. They gave another one just in August, 2,000 megawatt in Malacca. Guess the bind. Direct. No negotiation. Not only no negotiation. I asked the minister in parliament, how come you give direct? What are the terms of the deal? How much are we paying for these tariffs? No, at least when you award the contract, you must know what you are paying. No. Award first, discuss the price later. <laughs> this is our Malaysian government. And the worst thing, we found out that this power plant is only needed in 2021. It is not needed next year. It is not needed in two years' time. It is needed in seven years' time. And yet, the government rushed the award of the project to 1MDB without even negotiating the necessary tariffs first. Why? To rescue 1MDB. To give them projects so that they can, def they can demonstrate potential income to investors who may buy shares in the company. Then, still not enough. Last week, reports came up that they, have just going, they are going to award two more power plants in Sabah to 1MDB. And the reason why it's not enough is the reason why 1MDB energy is not listed yet. It's already been postponed twice. The bankers tell them, not showing enough profits to raise enough money. So they keep giving them more and more and more contracts. Lah. And that's how the government is bailing out 1MDB at our expense. Yes, 1MDB hasn't collapsed yet. The 1MDB, the government haven't pumped in money directly to pay for the loans yet. But what the government is doing is exactly the same thing. Except they do it under covers. They make your future generation, our children, our grandchildren, pay for the errors, the, 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 the scandals that they are doing today by awarding ludicrous amount of contracts to 1MDB uh, power in order to save the company. And to save the company so that they can pay off the old debts that they have run off. This is, this, is, this, is, this is a scam. I mean, why do we need 1MDB to run our power plants? Our power plants are already running very well. We have a very competitive private sector running these power plants. Why are they all now monopolized by 1MDB? There's no need for it. We are supposed to depend on our private sector. We are not supposed to nationalize our private sector. Not only in power. Land deals also the same. I won't take very long but the land deals, there are two fantastic land deals by 1MDB. The first one is Sungai Bersi, you know the airport, ah? airfield. Everyone knows the airfield. Fantastic piece of land. They bought it from the government for 72 ringgit per square feet. I asked my developer friend, um, 72 ringgit fair price. Ah? He said, you give me 200 ringgit also, I bite your hands off. 72 ringgit. Okay, never mind. So total land size multiplied by 72 ringgit, total 1MDB have to pay the government is 1.6 billion ringgit for that huge piece of land. 1.6 billion ringgit. So did the 1MDB pay the government? No. Why? Because to get the airfield, you must move the military operations from that area. You must shift the, all the facilities to other areas. So there's a cost involved in shifting. So 1MDB cannot pay the full amount to the government. 1MDB must also deduct for the cost to move the facilities to other areas. How much is the cost to move the facilities? 2.7 billion. <laughs> I buy the land for 1.1 billion and then the government pay me 2.7 billion to move the airfield. And net, I collect 1.1 from the government. So 2.7 minus 1.6, I collect 1.1 billion clean from the government. Okay? The excuse being, I have to move them from the airfield. Okay? Never mind. Now what happens next? Then the 1MDB goes to the bank and say, I need to borrow money in order to move the airfield. How much does it cost to move the airfield? 2.7 billion. 
So they borrowed 2.7 billion, even though they have already collected 1.1 billion from the Malaysian government to move the airfield. So they borrowed 2.7 billion, come in. And even though this was despite the fact that they have already awarded the contract to LTAT, Lembaga Tabung Angkatan Tentera, the Army Fund, to move the airfield. How much was the contract? The contract was 2.1 billion. But they borrowed 2.7 billion. When they have already collected 1.1 billion from the government. Which means what? Which means that they have 1.1 billion, 2.7 billion, they need to knock off 2.1 billion. They still have 1.7 billion. Do not go away. Do not go away. Okay? And this is, this is billions, uh, yes. This is billions, not million. Uh. Billion. Extra three zeros at the back. From millions. And then you got TRX, Tun Raza Exchange. The government gave them cheap as well. 191 million ringgit. 191 million ringgit. Within six months of the government giving them for 191, mi uh, 191 million ringgit in 2010. Okay? So 2000, March 2011 accounts, they immediately revalued it within six months to 1.1 billion ringgit. And then they declare a profit of 400 million, which means that if they have not revalued the land, they will have made losses of 500 million. From 191 million, they revalued to 1.1 million. One year later, they revalued it again. This time to 1.8 billion. One year later, they revalued it again. This time to 3.5 billion. And one year later, they revalued it again. This time, 6.2 billion ringgit. From a piece of land that was given to them four years before for 192 million ringgit. And Najib proudly comes to the parliament and declares that 1MDB is doing very well. They made a profit of 800 million last year. Despite the fact that they have a revaluation gain of 2.7 billion on that same piece of land, the government gave them for 192 billion. And the reason why they need to revalue, not only to show profits in their accounts, huh? it's not just to show profits in their accounts, it is so that they can go to the bank and borrow some more money. And the project hasn't even started. So all these billions don't know where. Many of these billions are overseas in very funny investments. I don't know what investments. Cayman Islands. In fact, if you read the 2013 accounts, March 2013 accounts, they had a new auditor, Deloitte. But even Deloitte didn't dare to, 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 to give 100%. They stated, out of the 40 billion of assets that 1MDB has, 12 billion of it, and basically the investments they had in Cayman Islands, okay? The auditor says these are level 3 assets. What is level 3 assets? What are level 3 assets? Level 3 assets are when, are when the auditors are unable to verify the actual value of these assets. They don't have the proper input to verify the veracity or the accuracy of the valuation of these assets. 12 billion ringgit. And for a company this size, 100% owned by the Ministry of Finance, Chat, board of advice, chairman for the board of advisors to 1MDB, the Prime Minister and Finance Minister, Datuk Sri Najib himself, they have not been able to submit their accounts on time. They were supposed to submit their accounts for March 2014 in September. The company's commission gave them an extension of one month. The year before, 2013, they were late by 14 months. Their excuse was they have to change auditors, so they have to do a lot of work and hence the delay. But this time round, no, they have only one auditor. Deloitte, Deloitte Malaysia. They were supposed to submit by September. They failed to submit. They say they were given one month extension, ending 31st of October 2014. Today is the 3rd of November, three days later. As of today, 1MDB financial accounts have not been submitted to the Registrar of Companies of Malaysia. Now that tells you only one thing. 
One, you need to change auditors again. <laughs> okay, no lah. Number two, the auditors are incompetent. I mean, Deloitte does multi-billion ringgit companies all over the world. They are never late for their accounts. Okay? Why should they be incompetent in dealing with one MDB accounts? And if they are not incompetent, if they are, I ask one MDB, please sack Deloitte, appoint someone else. But if what Deloitte is not one incompetent, and I would rather give Deloitte the benefit of the doubt, they are not incompetent. There's only one reason why the accounts have not been submitted yet. The auditors don't want to sign off the accounts. And why would the auditors not want to sign off the accounts? Because there are too much nonsense in the accounts. So I don't know when the accounts will be tabled. It is disgraceful, it is scandalous for a 100% Ministry of Finance owned entity with the Board of Advisors chaired by the Prime Minister himself not being able to submit accounts on time. Especially when the company is so big, when the public looks at it with great interest, 36 billion in debt, they are not able to submit their accounts on time. Not even 1MDB Energy, which is supposed to list soon. 1MDB Energy's 2013 account until today also haven't submit. Don't talk about 2014. 2013 until today haven't submit accounts. How can? And there's only one reason why I think can. The reason why can is because all these MCA, MIC, Grakan Kakis all don't dare to challenge their Prime Minister. All say, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Please carry on and rob the people's money. And I think we need to put a stop to this. And I hope that Malaysians, the people of Teling Jaya, do not give up on this. I know many people are disappointed, two reasons. Number one, people are disappointed, people are disillusioned, people are disempowered, people are disappointed because one, we didn't win in the last general election. Because two, we screwed up in slang off for a while. But I think as we get things better, we cannot give up. We cannot say that there is no hope. There is plenty of hope. We cannot say that there's no hope because we have no right to say there's no hope. When there is really no hope, people like Kit Siang, people like Kapal Singh lost their seats. DAP has only nine members of parliament. Total opposition was not more than 20 in parliament. Today, we have 89 members of parliament under Pakatan Rakyat. We have 37 DAP members of parliament. We receive 52% of the popular vote. We should have more hope today than any time in the history of Malaysia. And we cannot give up because of that. We have to look to the struggles of our past leaders, our, our older leaders. We have to keep at it. We have to bring, bring, bring up younger leaders and we have to make a difference. And we have to bring along, we have to convince the people in PJ, in Slangor, in Malaysia, the struggle must continue. We must not give up. Change will happen soon. Cannot. Cannot. Will you stay with us to bring down Barisan National Government? Will you bring more people to join us to bring down Barisan National People Government? So I hope we will continue this fight and certainly as your representative, I will continue to do my best in Parliament to bring up all the scandals, to ensure that all the your, your taxpayers' money are watched carefully to make sure that BN does not foolishly spend the rakyat's money away. Thank you. Thank you very much.